Good morning. Welcome. Hey, I'm Angie Lee. This is the Bite of Bread. Y'all, this is my fourth take. For some reason, the live is not going live and people aren't able to see me and, and get on um, with, the, with the broadcast. So I don't know what's going. So I'm going to teach this and then go ahead and put it on um, put it on my post so you can you can hear the teaching so it's from Genesis 16 13 this morning is the bite um, you know before I before I get there though I want to pray us up Lord we just thank you and praise you father I pray that whatever is stopping this from others being able to see it live that you would correct that Lord that you would be in the details you would be in the technology Lord, I pray others could see this. Lord, use this for your glory. Redeem these problems. We love you and praise you. Speak to me today in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. So we're just going to keep on going. Okay, so Genesis 16, 13. I love this story. The story is of Hagar. And Hagar was a maidservant of Sarah. And Sarah and, and Abraham had been living in the in Canaan. She had moved away from her family. She had moved with, with Abraham to the land of Canaan. She'd been living in tents 10 years. They'd been promised they were going to have a son. They'd been promised that, they, that Abraham would be a father of many nations. And Sarah could not conceive. For 10 years, she'd been trying to conceive and have this baby that they had been promised. And it wasn't happening, and it wasn't happening. And so Sarah decides she would say, Hey, hey, Abraham, why don't I give you my maidservant, Hagar? She can become your wife. You can sleep with her, and she can have the baby. That was very enough to us. That's just like, oh, that just sounds awful. But that was very common in those days. And so Abraham said yes. And all that brings us, well, it wasn't important. Can, can you imagine, not only imagine two women being married to the same man, which would be terrible, but then one of them gets pregnant and the other one still hasn't been able to get pregnant. And so the hormones and the emotions and everything going on is just not pretty. So, this sets us up to Genesis 16, 13. Hagar has conceived. Um, Sarah has been treating her badly and abusing her, and so she's running away. And in Genesis 16, 13, God meets her in the desert, in this place where she's running away. Genesis 16, 13, this is a bite for the day. She gave the name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me. For she said, I have seen the one who sees me. Okay, so that is our bite for today. That's what we're chewing on. And I've given you a little bit of the context. But let me read you a little bit more of that context. So I love this in verse 7. Um, Hagar is, has run away. She's in the desert. And in verse 7 it says, The angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. It was the spring that is beside the road to Shur. And he said, Hagar, servant of Sarai, where have you come from? And where are you going? Now, you know, God knew exactly where she had come from and where she was going, which I don't think she even knew herself where she was going, but she knew where she had come from. She was running away. He said, she says, I'm running away from my mistress, Sarai. And then the angel of the Lord told her, go back, go back to your mistress and submit to her. And the angel added, I will so increase your descendants that they will be too numerous to count. The angel of the Lord also said to her, you are now a child and you will have a son and you shall name him Ishmael. For the Lord has heard of your misery. He will be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone. He was going to be a fighter. He was going to be a, a warrior. And so everyone's hand was against him, and he will live in hostility toward all his brothers. That didn't sound too good, but that didn't deter her one bit. And so she gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me. For she said, I have seen the one who sees me. 
So this is such a sweet story. I love this story. Hagar is in a bad place. I mean, she has been, she's had to marry Abraham and sleep with them, and now she's pregnant, and now Sarah's not happy with her and abusing her. And so she's running away. But God takes the time to find her and meet with her and, and sees her and tells her it's going to be okay, but you got to go back. In the Jewish translation, in the Jewish Bible I have, um, the way they interpret this scripture, this spite, is that she says, I have seen God, the one who sees me, and not died. So that's another interpretation of this of this verse of this bite but there are two words here that are really important and as we we have translated in our bibles as see but there's two different words and one of them when she says um god he's the god who sees me that is the word roi we see it as roi so it looks like roi but it's roi um, El Ra'i, you are El Ra'i, the God who sees me. It does mean see, it does mean vision. But then she says, You are the God who Ra'i me, for she said, I have seen. And that word seen is different. That word is R A H A in the Hebrew, Reha. For I have Reha, and that means to see to understand, to experience, to examine, to attend to. So she says, for I have experienced, for I have seen, I have Reha, I have Reha the one who sees me. Reha, not, not Roy, again, a Roy, again, but then the one who either sees, but understands, experiences, examines, or attends to. So these are the different words. So, so Ra'e does mean see and vision. And she says, the God who sees me, but also she says, I have experienced the one who either understands me or has attended to me, who's examined me, that is what I think of God, of her saying, I have, I have experienced the God who understands me. Because it was like God understood her, right? God knew what predicament she was in. God knew how things weren't good back at the home in Abraham and Sarai. He, he knew that. But yet he says, I'm going to take care of your son. He's going to make it. He's, he's going to be a, a great man. And I'm going to take care of you. But you got to go back. you got to go back. And, he, and don't you know that she went back knowing that this God who understood her, this God who attended to her, was going to help her and be with her um, the whole time. Um, so what did Hagar take back with her when she went back? to Abram and Sarai's home. She went back with assurance. She went back with hope. She went back having experienced El Ra'i, the God who sees her. Doesn't it mean a lot to know that God sees you? He sees you right where you are. Genesis 21, 8 through 19 tells the rest of the story. So Hagar did have Ishmael. Abram loved Ishmael. He loved his son. Um, Sarah did not love him so much. And they do become Abraham and Sarah in between all that. God changes their name um, right before they have um, uh, they have their son Isaac. But in Genesis 21, 8 through 19, Sarah has... has um, had Isaac has has had this baby their their son that the promised son that they waited for so long and in Genesis 21 8 um 8 through 19 I'm going to read some of that the child grew this is um Isaac the child grew and was weaned and on the day Isaac was weaned Abraham held a great feast 
But Sarah saw that the son whom Hagar the Egyptian had borne to Abraham was mocking. And she said to Abraham, get rid of that slave woman and her son, for that slave woman's son will never share the inheritance with my Isaac. And so it killed him. It says the matter distressed Abraham greatly. It concerned him for his son. But God told him to do what Sarah said. And he said, I'm, I'm going to take care of him, but do what Sarah says. And so in verse 14, early the next morning, Abram, Abraham took some food and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar. And he set them on his shoulders and then sent her off with the boy. She went on her way and wandered into the desert of Beersheba. So she's gone back into the desert. When the water in the skin was gone, she put the boy under one of the bushes and then she went off and sat down nearby, about a bow shot away, for she thought, I cannot watch the boy die. And as she sat there nearby, she began to sob. And I love this. Listen to what God does. So God heard the boy crying, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What is the matter, Hagar? Do, do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Lift the boy up. Take him to the hand, by the hand, for I will make him into a great nation. And then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. Oh, you know why I love that story so much? Not only is God still attending to her, he's still the, the L. Reha, God, the one who is attending to her, the one who understands her, and he's still the El Ra'i God, the God who sees her and sees her son and knows their predicament. But in that moment, she could not see any hope. She couldn't see the well. I believe the well was there the whole time because it says she opened her eyes to see the well. She couldn't even see it. Have you ever been so distressed and so upset and so heartbroken and in such a fog of, of grief or worry that you could not see the provision of God right before you? This story to me is just one that promises that, that many times we just need to stop and just ask God to help us see the provision, to help us understand, believe, and see him as the God who sees us, El Ra'i, and the God who reha us, the one who understands us, the one who attends to us, the one who examines us, the one we can examine. Amen? Isn't that powerful? That That is who our God is. Um, in this book that I love, that I'm, I'm, I've gotten a lot of this from, is Pray the Names of God by Ann Spangler. And I am giving this away at the end of the week. And so I wanted to read a little bit. El Ra'i, a God so watchful that he has said to note when even the smallest sparrow falls to the ground. This is the God who watches over you today. Whether or not you recognize his presence, aware that you may sometimes find yourself in desolate places, he is always near, helping you find a path through troubles, working out his future, working out plans for your future. Did you hear that? He is always near, working out his plans for your future and can I just tell you his plans are good Jeremiah 29 11 for my plans are for peace not to harm you plans to give you hope in the future Matthew 10 29 and 30 is a scripture about the sparrows are not two sparrows sold this is Jesus speaking Jesus says this are not two sparrows sold for a penny Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your father. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than any, than many sparrows. If a sparrow has fallen to the ground and God sees that, how much more does he know us? 
and does he see us? What does this mean for you today? Are you in a place where you just feel like God is, is not there and doesn't see you? Are in a place where you're worried? Are you in a place where, you, where there's so much hardship? Cry out to him, God, help me see you. Help me rot uh, you. But Lord, also help me raise you. Help me experience you. Help me understand. Uh, well, we can't understand him, right? But to experience him, to see him attending to us. Let me remind you that Hagar's life didn't, the circumstances in her life didn't change. She still was pregnant. She still had to go back to Abram and Sarai. She still had to deal with that situation. And when she was in the desert, she didn't get to, then they didn't get to go back. Then they had to go forward and move on, but God was providing for them. So the circumstances didn't change, but God's presence in those circumstances the fact that he saw her, the fact that he understood, the fact that he attended to her, and the fact, according to, to some translations, that she saw him did not die, that he's a good God. He's a personal God, and he sees you, and he cares. I want to read to close with Psalm 121, 3, 5 through 8. For the eyes of the Lord, actually, um, let me go. I'm sorry. Psalm 121, 3, 5 through 8. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. Now, you might be in the midst of harm. You might be in the midst of trouble, but he will keep you and protect you within that. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. And Second Chronicles 16, 9 says, For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to Him. He's, he's there. He's watching over you. He will strengthen you. He understands you. Try to experience him, to feel his presence, and to find that assurance and that hope that he is El Ra'i, the God who sees us. Hold my hand. Let me pray you up. Lord, we praise you and love you and thank you for your goodness and kindness. Thank you that you have eyes that see us right where we are. That you have, that you provide, you provision, Lord. Open our eyes to provision around us. Um, help us go back and know if we need to go back, if we're running from something, if you told us to go back, give us the strength to do so. Lord, I pray for those who are in lonely places who are struggling, that they would feel your presence, that they would see you and hear you and know you as El Ra'i, the God who sees them. It's in Jesus' name we pray. We thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Well, guys, thank you. I'm sorry this didn't go live. I'm going to post it on um, on my timeline when I get through. It'll also be on YouTube. Share this with your friends and I will add you to the giveaway list. Even if you shared it yesterday, share it again today. Share this one today and I will put your name down again um, in the giveaway to receive, to win the Praying the Names of God by Ann Spangler. So I hope you have a, good, a great day. Go out there. Be a threat to the enemy. God has plans and purposes of eternal proportions his economy is not the same as ours. So you, you just go out there, listen to him, follow him, and bless those around you. Have a great day. Bye.